As we continue our discussion of baptism this week, today we're going to talk about the practice of rebaptizing, which is very common in American Protestant Christianity, but much to the surprise of many in America, is a minority practice and is something that wasn't even practiced in the church until nearly 1500 years after the time of Christ. You see, baptism has universally been held up until about the 16th century as a once and for all, once in a lifetime event. This is what St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so the Christian church insisted again for some 1,500 years that one was baptized one time. It's a once in a life event. And for the majority of the Christian church, it was always a ritual of initiation. It was kind of your welcoming, your coming home into the church, as well as the washing away of sins. But in the 16th century, uh, there were Protestants that came about and they began to think differently about baptism. And they began to embrace the belief that we would refer to as a believer's baptism. And they insisted that in order for a baptism to be valid, a person must first accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then the baptism would count. And so these people were rebaptized. And the title Anabaptist means rebaptizer. And this is where the Baptists uh, get, many of them at least, get their title from today. And there was one man in particular, his name is Felix Manns. He was actually the first Anabaptist who was martyred or killed for his belief in his practice of rebaptism. And when he was thrown into an icy river in Zurich, Switzerland on January 5th, 1527, those who stood by and approved of killing him for this, what they viewed to be an aberrant practice of rebaptism, referred to his execution in the icy river as his third baptism. Undoubtedly a cruel and terrible way to end someone's life, especially the life of another Christian. But that's how seriously the church at that point in time took this idea that baptism is a once and for all event. And so for us as Lutheran Christians, we still hold on to that traditional view of baptism, that it is a once in a lifetime event. If you were baptized, it doesn't matter how old, it doesn't matter who baptized you, it doesn't matter how much water they used. We believe that there is one baptism for the remission of sins, just as St. Paul says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so again, we can take issue with Christians killing other Christians over this practice, and we certainly would not advocate that today. But when it comes to talking to people who go to churches, that the normal practice is for someone to be baptized when they change churches or go to a different congregation, or maybe some practice the idea of being baptized after you've made a decision to accept Jesus. We as Lutheran Christians want to be sensitive to that. We want to understand that. And we want to encourage them. Maybe there's a little more to baptism. Maybe, instead of it being about what they're doing for God, maybe it actually is, as Jesus says, as St. Paul says, God's gift of faith through Christ Jesus. And it is truly something to be done once and for all. Please pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of baptism, for washing our sins away and making us yours in the waters of holy baptism. Bless us with your spirit, that we will be compassionate towards those who have different views of baptism. Help us to build them up in your son Jesus Christ, not to tear them down because we have a different understanding, but rather help them also to find their comfort, their hope, their life in you and in the forgiveness that is all of ours in your son Jesus Christ, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. Blessings on your day. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Click the icon to subscribe or explore more of our video lessons on our channel.